them is from above. These people are very, very sincere in whatever they are doing. There is no shiftiness from them or there is no instability within them. Or these people are not unpredictable people. They will stick to their standards. They are not hypocrites. They are always sincere in whatever they are doing. So when we are looking into these eight characteristic features of a wise person who has got wisdom from above, what is the resultant? Look into the verses here in 18. And the seed whose fruit is righteous is sown in peace by those who make peace. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time. Thank you for your presence among us. As you have promised, like where two or three have gathered, your presence is going to be there. We feel it, Lord. We know it. It is you you are going to speak. We are going to hear it, Lord. Amen. Help us to rivet all the Informations and messages that you want to incorporate into our hearts and minds. So we will be able to follow them and impart the same to our families, children, and other people. Be with us. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 We will continue in the Book of James, and we will do the same today also. We all have seen pictures of uh, deserts. It's a place of uh, dryness, barrenness, and the terrain is always rough and tough and is fruitless. But at the same time, if you could imagine an oasis in the middle of the desert with the water, with the trees around, it's totally a different scenario. In the middle of the desert, where this is it is almost the same of our spiritual being before we accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. Our lives were totally like a desert. It was dry and it was so barren and it was totally fruitless. But once when we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, the Holy Spirit has indwelled in us and it has given us a new spirit, a new life in us. As what Jesus Christ has mentioned, the spring of living water that is satisfying our souls. And the spirit within us help us to yield better fruits. That's what James is mentioning in the first chapter when we looked into those he mentions all the good things, every perfect and good thing is coming from above, from the Father of Lights. That's what we did see when we were looking into chapter 1 and this verse is in chapter um, 1 verse 17. And the following verse, 
he reminds us that god brought us forth by the word of truth so that we would be a kind of first fruits among his creatures that's verse 18 of ch- chapter 1 this new birth from above what does that mean it's it's the spiritual birth that we get when we have the holy spirit within us i have i have mentioned in my previous uh, lessons about sanctification which i want to say that again the holy spirit that is within us transforms our lives as believers from within the change is happening from inside to outside that's the transformation which is called sanctification sanctification is a lifelong process the moment we accept jesus christ as our savior when the holy spirit comes within us that's one time event that is salvation why i say all these is when this sanctification process is happening there is a transformation that is going on within us that is the main message of the letter of james the real faith produces genuine works this is the big picture of the whole book of james if you do remember the very first lesson was about this the big picture real faith produces genuine works in the very first section what we saw earlier james was mentioning about real faith producing genuine stability that's what we saw in the first chapter for the verses from verses 1 to 27 when we have that stability what he says is we will be able to endure through the trials and tribulations and then we looked into how that will help us to resist temptation and that will help us to respond to god's word and then in the second section what we studied it was real faith producing genuine love whatever we looked into chapter 2 the earlier part of ch- chapter 2 and then the chapter 3 whatever we did last month faith rejects prejudice and how that acts kindly towards those in need and last time we saw how we have to tame our tongues today we will be looking into real faith produces genuine humility we will be looking into james 3 Uh, verse 30 13 to 18 okay vasiji va yeah two kinds of wisdom who is wise and understanding among you let them show it by their good lives by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom but if you ha- harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts do not boast about it or deny the truth such wisdom does not come 
from down from heaven but is earthly and spiritual demonic for where you have envy and selfish ambition there you find disorder and every evil practice but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first all of of all pure then peace loving considerate submissive full of mercy and good fruit impartial and sincere peacemakers who so in peace reap a harvest of righteousness amen is a the old power not a biblical power but a old power which says a tree is best measured when it is down this is like uh, they fell the tree and then they try to make all the furniture and everything but before that they have to cut down the tree but only when they cut down the tree they will know how good the tree is the reason i say this is a person's good measure of accomplishment is seen at the end of a person's life a very good example can be um, king solomon he was wearing different hats during his period like he was the king he was a diplomat he was an engineer he was an architect above all he was a very good writer a poet everyone knows that and he is the only person we read in the bible when god appeared to him in the vision and asked him he responded by saying like he needs wisdom and knowledge thousands of years after king solomon here in the book of james in the new testament james here is mentioning if you do remember this verse he says but if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of god who gives all generously and without reproach and it will be given to him when i was preparing this message i came across this uh, uh information the book of james in the new testament is the version of old testament of wisdom literature so this is the only book where we see a lot of information about wisdom that is being written as you did hear about these verses from 13 to 18 so clear and it is so simple in language that james is giving us contrast between wise and unwise there are only six verses just six verses it gives a contrast between a person who has wisdom from above and who has a person who lacks wisdom from god when you look into those verses there are three categories for the wise and for the unwise james is telling about the signs the characteristics and the results of the wise and the unwise if you look into the big picture what are all the signs of an unwise person if you look into the verses we read now it says bitter jealousy 
selfish ambitions these are clear signs of an unwise person and if you look into the characteristic features of these persons we read they are arrogant dishonest worldly natural and demonic and what is the result of this behavior or wisdom from world this will lead to disorder and evil but when you look into the wise person what are all the signs of a wise person it says good behavior gentle deeds and if you look into the characteristic features there are eight characteristic features james is mentioning pure peace loving gentle reasonable merciful bountiful unwavering and sincere and when we have a person with god's wisdom what is the result the end of the verse 18 that is righteousness and peace so with this big picture we will go into each categories and see exactly what it means it's very very simple to understand as we read the verses look into the very first verse james is starting with a question mark who among you is wise and understanding this question is posted by james not to have anyone raise up their hands but have their conscience know come on tell me who is wise among you and understanding that's the tone of that question that's how we have to understand this question. most of the people we see in this world they always think they are so wise and understanding but what james is advising here is the wise person to prove their wisdom by two signs by good behavior and gentle deeds the good behavior refers to a changed lifestyle of a believer that was the reason i mentioned earlier now the spirit indwells in us there is a transformation within us that's what it is mentioning here in james it refers to the good behavior that's the changed life style of a believer this one automatically moves into the second one that is gentle deeds the life of a wise person changes towards good things exhibiting their readiness to obey god's word this directly applies to the big picture of the whole book of james which is what real faith produces genuine works the second attitude here in the in the 13th verse deeds in gentleness of wisdom it refers to the wisdom that is inspired by humility and meekness in this present world gentleness and meekness these two qualities especially gentleness is one of the spirit uh, uh, fruit of the spirit these two are looked upon the present world as totally different things they always look into believers as spineless it is always looked into as a mark of weakness but if you look into galatians 
522 to 23 wherein we when we read about the fruits of the spirit gentleness and self control comes next to next which does mean the strength we normally have have to be controlled in a proper fashion that is gentleness that's what god has given us that gentleness and self control he is expecting from us which is the fruit of the spirit if i have to explain rightly it is almost like controlling a high spirited horse to control them and make them go in the right path or it's more like driving a car in a race wherein you will know when to race when to apply the brakes that is the that is the simplest way we could explain that one so the very first verse when he asks this question who among you is wise and understanding let him show by his good behavior his deeds in the gentleness of wisdom so he has introduced the idea of a wise person marked by good way of life and genuine work now he shifts to certain things if you look into the starting of verse 14 it starts with but i have already told you in the past whenever there is but in the bible in a verse the verse goes in an opposite direction here when you look here it says but if you have bitter jealousy and selfish selfish ambition in your heart do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth this is verse 14 james is starting off at the beginning in this verse with two characteristic features the signs of the word i told you in the beginning bitter jealous and selfish ambition we know about jealousy but when you think about bitter jealousy what does that mean when you look into a jealous person he is a person who is already having everything in his hands full and he has all his belongings but what is making him so jealous is he is threatened by another person's success he is threatened by another person's uh, success i think like um but uh, two weeks back when um dr jack mar was uh, taking the message he was mentioning about this one the jealous heart of people so when when we talk about bitter jealousy that is the jealousness in a person that is being harbored for long time they look into other people's success they look into other people how they come up in life and they are not able to overcome that and that is being harbored in their hearts for long time that brings that bitter jealous when they have this bitter jealous this automatically becomes or it automatically goes into having a selfish ambition what does that mean people who are having this bitter jealousiness they have now a demanding thing in their hearts and minds 
to push themselves whatever that happens whatever may be the reasons they want to be always on the top they always want success whatever be the cause either good thing or bad thing hook or crook they want to be in success they don't want other people to succeed that is selfish ambition they are not worried about other people they are always like self centered people that's what here james is mentioning the wisdom that is not from heaven that people are having two signs bitter jealousy and selfish ambition you might wonder why james is talking about these two kinds of characteristics among believers James did see this among believers and we see them among believers even today people who have their jealousy and selfish ambition moving on to the characteristic features of these five um characteristic features of this uh unwise person the very first word james uses is arrogance if you look into the verses it says selfish ambition in your heart and do not be arrogant the wicked people as i have mentioned i think like this is also one what uh, dr jack ma was mentioning how people were celebrating the downfall of other persons that is the reason these people have that jealousiness and selfish ambition and when a colleague or a person who works in the church they stumble and fall down these kind of people they celebrate it these are wicked and vicious things that these people though they are believers they do it and one another characteristic feature under this arrogance is these kind of people they justify their sinful actions which they do very proudly to i don't want to give any example but i think like you can understand what i'm trying to say here this is this is totally in contrast to god's inspired humility the second characteristic feature here mentioned is lying against truth next to arrogance if you look into the words it says do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth for the people of this characteristic features they set their own standards they set their own standards for the truth they can go ups and downs based on their own selfish habits which is totally against god's revealed truth god's revealed truth is always immovable but people who have wisdom from this world they can shift that truth according to their comforts that's what the change of mentioning and the third characteristic feature here is which is totally opposite from heaven when we say earthly their motives and their priorities are all temporal their perspective is totally different their perspective is always 
horizontal looking to other people looking into materialistic things when they are given priorities their priorities are always temporal that is the reason james is mentioning here that wisdom that is from earth is earthly and the fourth one is natural if you look into people who think they are very wise and knowledgeable they have got three things always with them i me and myself they are always self centered their motives are always towards themselves and anything that circulates within themselves or is it hurting themselves or is it going to be fruitful for them their thoughts their attitudes their interests everything is going to be about them that's what he is mentioning here as natural and the fifth characteristic he mentions here is demonic look at the verse in 15 this wisdom is not which comes down from above which is earthly natural and demonic here the word demonic is not mentioned as something from the demons but what he is trying to say here is like when the wisdom that is not from god is supposed to be exactly the opposite of godly which is demonic so contrary to the truth of god so it should be out of the realms of god which is going to be satan himself so if you look into the overall picture here when you see the heart of a unwise person it is bitter and jealousy and they have selfish ambition and when you have these two characteristics what do the person look like they are arrogant they are lying against the truth that is they are dishonest and they are so worldly and they are so natural and they are so demonic so what happens what is the result here if you look into the verse james is ending his verse by saying for bear jealousy and self ambition exist there is disorder and every evil thing there is chaos here if you look into verse 16 it says for where jealousy and self ambition exist there is disorder and every evil thing so we now know how a worldly wisdom person is with these two signs and five characteristic things it will eventually lead to disorder and evil now if you move to verses 17 and 18 again this verse 17 starts with but as i told you when there is a word but it goes in the opposite direction so all these verses prior whatever we looked into we were looking into wisdom from heaven now he is sh- shifting by saying but the wisdom from above is pure then peace loving gentle reasonable full of mercy and good fruits unwavering without hypocrisy he is actually what james is doing here is he is revisiting verses 13 here how do i say that look into this 
from wisdom from above, that is verses 17 and 18, he's mentioning about a person who's demonstrating that wisdom by what two characters we said in verses 13, good behavior and deeds done in gentleness. That's what I'm. That's what I was mentioning here. He's revisiting. James is revisiting verses thirteen here. Two signs of a good person: good behavior and gentle deeds. This is totally co in contrast to a person who was having wisdom from earth, had bitter jealousy and selfish ambition. So you have to be very careful about these two contrasts here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So with these two character uh, signs, he's mentioning about the characteristic feature of these wisdom that we get from heaven. He gives us eight characteristic features in these verses. The very first one here is pure. Before I go into this, try to locate Matthew chapter 5. Keep a finger at Matthew 5. When we go through this, it will be easy to look into a parallel verse over there. So the very first characteristic feature of a person who has got wisdom from heaven is pure. So this indicates how genuine and how important that wisdom that God is giving us. The purity, the wisdom that gives that is given by God produces purity of internal motives. There is always a purpose of certain words that are written in the Bible. It was not just like that written for some um, namesake. The reason why I say this is the wisdom that comes from heaven has got other characteristic features too. But when the writer writes pure, there is an internal motive for that. That is the reason they have written the pure as the very first characteristic feature. The reason why I said that put your fingers in Matthew 5 is when you have this wisdom from heaven, there is an inbuilt promise. You might ask what that inbuilt promise is. If you can read Matthew 5, 8. In Matthew 5, 8, it is written, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That is the inbuilt promise when we have that wisdom from heaven, which is pure. When you have that pure wisdom, we will be able to see God. The purity of our thoughts and the good works in us will help us see God working in our everyday life in all the circumstances. And the second characteristic feature here is peace loving. It is totally opposite, as I told you, it is totally opposite to the bitter jealousy and selfish ambition. God-given wisdom, they always produce peaceful relationship. And when you have that wisdom, there will not be any arguments, there will not be any quarrel, and people will not be much 
of a quick-tempered person. That God's supernatural life within us, it, it guards us against all these characteristic features of quarrelsomeness, argument, quick temperament. That's the reason I initially mentioned like the transformation and the sanctification the Holy Spirit that brings within us the wisdom, godly wisdom takes care of us by we not getting indulged into all these worldly affairs. And again, this peace-loving characteristic again has got a inbuilt promise. If you look into again the same chapter of Matthew, the very next verse, verse 9, it says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. So, every characteristic feature mentioned here within this there is a promise for us. The third characteristic feature is gentleness. As I have already mentioned, gentleness is again one of the fruits of the Spirit. I think like when we were looking into um, the previous messages, I do remember like um, Johnson was uh, preaching about this gentleness, fruits of Spirit. It's more like a person yielding or surrendering their rights for a higher ideal. This is what uh, we read in the, the verses down in chapter 5 in Matthew. When Jesus says, like, whoever slaps you on your cheek, turn the other also to him. So that is the gentleness we should have when we have that wisdom from above. And the fourth characteristic feature James mentioning here is reasonable. This is, this is uh, referring to a person who is flexible and who is a person who is able to open himself for any changes. The Spirit of the God is able to make some flexible changes. If I have to mention this properly, a very good example would be Abraham's relationship with the Lord. If you do remember in Genesis when we were uh, reading earlier, long time back, The promise of God to Abraham is the land of Canaan. This promise was given exclusively to Abraham. It was not given to Lot. But when Abraham and Lot travel together, and when they have more flocks and herdsmen, there were some quarrels. At that time, if you do remember, Abraham, he did not say to Lot, this place, this land is a promised land that we have given. He did not do it. He said, he said, please let there not be any strife between you and me. Following that, he said, like, if you move to the left, I will go to the right. And if you go to the right, I will go to the left. That is the yielding temperament of a person who has got wisdom from above. A reasonable, cooperative, flexible mind of a person. And the next characteristic feature 
is merciness. This character of merciness, we see that in our God. If Christ is giving a person a blessing that we don't deserve, and mercy withholding a punishment to a person who does deserve, that's we are all. It is because of His grace which we don't deserve and the mercy of God which we really do deserve. If you look into a person who is filled by the Holy Spirit and who is filled with the wisdom of heaven, that person has got more mercy. He has more kindness in him and he has got more compassion in him than a person who has got wisdom from earth. Followed by mercy, he mentions about bountiful, the sixth characteristic feature. A wise person is filled with good fruits. See how James is writing merciful and bountiful together. As I, as I mentioned, each word that is written in the Bible, it has got a purpose. When a person is merciful and bountiful, he has got more things that he can give to other people. If you just imagine our condition and how we have sinned against God, and when we are deserved for punishment, God, who is rich in His mercy and grace, pardons our sins and still gives us more and more blessings which we really don't deserve. That is a very good way of illustrating this one. A merciful person and a bountiful person. And moving on to the seventh characteristic feature here is a person who has got wisdom from above is unwavering. In the sense, a person who has got this wisdom will never violate biblical standards. Whatever may be the situation, it applies to us also. So whatever be the situation, either in our workplace or anywhere else, you need not compromise anything for the biblical standards. That is one of the wisdoms that we have when we have this wisdom coming from heaven. And then the final characteristic feature James mentions here is sincerity. When this wisdom is from above, these people are very, very sincere in whatever they are doing. There is no shiftiness from them or there is no instability within them. Or these people are not unpredictable people. They will stick to their standards. They are not hypocrites. They are always sincere in whatever they are doing. So when we are looking into these eight characteristic features of a wise person who has got wisdom from above, what is the resultant? Look into the verses here in 18. And the seed whose fruit is righteous is sown in peace by those who make peace. What does that mean? These people are peacemakers. 
they plant seeds of peace they plant seeds of peace and what do they harvest look into the words they harvest righteousness if you look into wisdom of a person who has got from earth that resulted in what disorder and evil but if you have that wisdom from above you will have peace and you will have righteousness so if i want to recapitulate everything whatever we looked into the unwise person who's bitter and jealous who's arrogant dishonest worldly natural and demonic characters will end up in disorder and evil but if we have the wisdom from above we will be having good behavior and will be doing good works by doing that we will be pure peace loving gentle reasonable merciful bountiful unwavering sincere and if we do all this we will be having peace when we have this peace sown we will be harvesting righteousness having looked into all these verses let us look into certain things what we want to learn from these six just six verses how do we want to identify ourselves in this scenario do we struggle with jealousiness of other people's success is our life motivated by personal pursuits at the cost of peace how have these inward feelings and outward actions affect those around us disorder and pettiness come out of our life are we perceiving things of the world rather than the things of god is our life characteristic by gentleness and humility do the people around us in our workplace or anywhere else to know ourselves as a person of mercy and peace are we the same at home at church at work or in public places let us examine ourselves with these question do we portray ourselves as wise and people and and people with wisdom and that wisdom whatever we claim to be wise and knowledgeable do we claim that wisdom is from above or from earth
Lord, search us. Search your hearts, Lord. Test and see, Lord, if there is any anxious thoughts in us. Lord, by doing that, stir our hearts and minds to bring up any dirt, any sinful habits, any attributes, any characteristics that is not going to glorify you, Lord. Help us to identify those. Help us to acknowledge that we have these attributes or characteristic features which is exactly the opposite of what you expect from us, Lord. Help us to remove those attributes from us. Help us always to receive that wisdom from above which is always pure and peace-loving love. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always be fruitful and desirable to you, Lord. Amen. Search us thoroughly, Lord. Lead us in the right path. Help us always to enter through the narrow gates, Lord. Amen. Help us to focus on things that you desire for us, Lord. Help us to live by faith, not by sight, Lord. Give us a pure heart. Fill that with the wisdom from above. Let us not lack that wisdom that comes from above, Lord. Let them always be with us. Let us not deny that wisdom, Lord, whatever be the situation or the circumstances. Help us always surrender ourselves, leading ourselves to your will, that your will be done not our will, Lord. Help us to follow whatever you have taught us today. Impart this to our family, our children, our co-workers, wherever we are, Lord. Let them see in us the character that you have incorporated. Help us to be always the shining light that will always glorify your name, Lord. Thank you for being with us and talking through us, Lord. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.